Hey, just real quick, I wanted to add this. Uh, this video will contain spoilers for Godzilla Minus One, and I don't really go into much detail about what happens in two Minus One. This video is really intended for people who have already seen Minus One. So, if you haven't watched Minus One yet because you never went out to theaters or for some reason Toho decided it doesn't want to play in your region for some stupid reason then i highly recommend you check out this video and come back after you've seen minus one anyways if you stay past this point or just want to hear me talk even without the context of the movie uh, please enjoy you know and thanks for watching hey how's it going everybody welcome back to the channel and today I want to give my thoughts of Godzilla Minus One. Now I've seen the film six times in theaters. Lucky me, part of the perks of being a theater employee. The last time I saw it was actually a little bit over a week ago. I was hoping to maybe watch it, I don't know, one more time before I did a proper review. But I, I think I've watched the movie enough to where it's just kind of ingrained in my head you know where it's just like yep i kind of just know this movie in and out well enough to be like yeah you know i don't think i really need to watch it again to you know share my thoughts or at least in this stage you know if once the movie gets to a physical release hopefully then would we be able to do like more of a deeper analysis and i'll be honest one of the reasons why i hold off on really putting a minus one review even though it's like this is so anti youtube algorithm like i missed the minus one hype train a while ago like over a month ago so this review it is coming in super late but 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 the reason why is just I think I I didn't want to just be re reiterating the same points that everybody else was making about the movie because guess what I, the reasons I love this movie spoiler alert I love this movie is for reasons other people love it and that's where I was like you know I want to watch the movie as many times as I can really soak it in and I was going to try to do something crazy, but and do like a whole um, video of just, I've seen Godzilla Minus One so many times, and yeah, 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 but last month was just not going my way at all, really. Uh, so many plans were just not coming to fruition at all, so I kind of scrapped that idea, but yeah, you know, that's part of the reason why I've just kind of pulled out, and I was just like, you know, I want to so get this movie and I also didn't want to be lost in the sea of other creators talking about this movie so you know it that was another reason why is to why it's taken me so long to actually come out and do a review so what am I going to say about this movie that everybody else is saying you know that that's the thing you know I don't really want this to be a review or a traditional review of sorts I mean I can go and say, oh, this is why I love this movie, and I just reiterate the same points that everybody else said. I mean, that's the, that's the trouble of reviewing it, is that everybody else has kind of said what I would love to say in terms of, like, just sheer opinion. Like, I share a lot of opinions with other people. Uh, Godzilla's great, most terrifying version, the human characters are great. You know, and so on and so forth but I think I you know and it took me a while until literally right before I started recording about half an hour ago uh, I mean literally like half an hour ago I just kind of thought about where I want to take the direction of this video instead of maybe doing a proper review and talking about why I love this movie I want to maybe discuss why everybody has been loving this movie i mean like why it's just been so successful why has it been coming everybody's favorite godzilla movie what is it about minus one that is taking off everybody else's boxes 
And yeah, that's really want, what I want to discuss about today. Now, I'm going completely unscripted, so this will be interesting. I don't even have notes, but I've kind of just been talking in my own space. You know, it's just like, okay, I think I got the point where I want to talk about. So, yeah, so why, why is it that people love this movie so much? Why is it that this is becoming everybody's favorite Godzilla movie? Now, could it be recency bias? Possibly, but it is interesting to see that it's done so well in the American box office, especially. Uh, just worldwide, it has just been doing super well. It's been winning awards left and right. It is, people are really resonating with Godzilla Minus One. And I don't think it's just because, oh, it's a really good Godzilla movie. Actually, I think what's funny enough about Godzilla Minus One, when you look at the grand scale of the other Godzilla movies, is that this is probably the most human Godzilla movie. In fact, I would argue that this is the anti-Godzilla movie in some in some regard. Uh, what do I mean by anti-Godzilla movie? Well, Godzilla is not really the main focus of this movie. The main focus is the lead character being Koichi Shikishima, the ex-Yamakaze pilot, you know, or the, dra the failed kamikaze pilot but yeah he is the focus of this movie and that's what i mean like okay so despite you know people's insistence that godzilla movies don't have great human characters there have been good human characters in godzilla movies previously akane from godzilla x mecha godzilla comes into mind the cast of ebra horror of the deep you know you can look through and say that the cast and characters of previous Godzilla movies have been great. But there is something special about the cast in Minus One. Like I said before, the focus is on Shikishima and his past and his struggle. Um, what I think, why I call it the anti-Godzilla movie is that... It is so focused on the struggles of the people. It is so, it's much more focused on that. Godzilla is, a, granted, yes, Godzilla is like one of the major issues that the characters are facing, one of the major antagonistic forces that the characters are facing. But what I mean about Godzilla not being the main focus is that, unlike other Godzilla movies, you know, like previous Godzilla movies, while we've had good human characters, most of the focus, like the human characters are focused around, are, you know, revolve around the kaiju. Revolve on what, what are the kaiju or aliens are doing. We don't really just get to experience their lives. And here, though, we've. This is. You know, what's really interesting about Minus One is that there are just moments in this movie where. Again, there is no real talk or mention about Godzilla. We're just witnessing and viewing Shikishima's life, you know, or his, like, just, yeah, his daily life, you know, as he he and everybody else in Japan recovers after World War II. You know, we get a mundane moments of just him getting a job. Him, you know, granted, this one is being a... Uh, job that destroys minds but is a job that probably normal people had to do back in world war ii he and his fellow co-workers having dinner in his new house talking about the fam you know his family uh, you know and just having moments of just where godzilla granted godzilla is in it's always like a background presence like he's always in the background lurking but what i'm trying to get through is that we get to really focus on all these characters and just see we are focused on their struggles godzilla being one of them one of the primary ones especially as the film goes on but the characters aren't really interested in you know what's 
Godzilla, why is Godzilla destroying Japan? You know, something that previous Godzilla movies do. Where, like, going back to the original, for instance, while we've had low moments of, you know, characters interacting, whatever, the focus was primarily on Godzilla, Godzilla's rampage throughout the entire film, because Godzilla destroying, like, the ships in the beginning of the film, you know, escalate to Godzilla attacking Tokyo, and everything is revolving around Godzilla in that respect. GMK, it's revolved around not only Godzilla's resurgence being brought back by the souls of the victims of World War II, of the imperialist Japanese army, all the angry spirits, and the ancient guardian monsters. While there are mundane moments, there is something that is sort of... Something is always in, like, present, like, not just in the background, but it's, like, you know, very... With there in the scene that's just like, oh, this isn't really a normal conversation. There is something revolving around the greater scope of the movie, of the kaiju. But again, with Minus One, we just get moments where we, we already know Godzilla is there. But we're not focused on Godzilla. We're, Godzilla is very just is just in the back of our minds. You know, not very present. Not everybody's like... We don't have like a scene where Shikishima is trying to be like... Oh, by the way, guys, you know, just in like a dinner, in the like random dinner scene, it's like, by the way, I need to tell you, in Odo Island, I, you know, exposition or just, Shikishima is not obsessed with Godzilla in that regard. And we don't even really get like scientists or government officials trying to explore Godzilla in a sense. That's what I mean, you know, we're focused. We're mainly focused on the people here. That's like the difference here. And we resonate much more with that than we do with like, say other, you know, Gaiju movies or the previous Godzilla movies. Uh, I somewhat retract my statement about Kaiju movies because of the Gamera trilogy, because that was, that was a very much character driven movie series. But my stance with the Godzilla movies where Godzilla really always succeeded on the grander scale sort of like social commentary and or just just being on this massive scale that is more of like you know community effort and but here it's just again is focused on Shikishima and his personal struggle his trauma his survivor skill and we relate to Shikishima so much even though we I I will I'll make a statement saying that I think most of us who've seen Minus One have not gone through World War II. You know, shocker, I know. But, or we haven't even really fought in war or got participated in war, but we we at least have, we are, we have witnessed war in our lives. We are witnessing war and genocide in our lives right now. But, I'm getting a little bit off track, um, but what I'm trying to get at is that Shikishima and the rest of the characters are really relatable. In fact, something, and it's not just Shikishima too, is everybody. Everybody has some relatability. Like Shikishima's like crewmates, his coworkers, Cap, Kid, and the Doc. I'm not gonna. Re- I don't remember their Japanese names. Sorry about that. You know. They are likable and they are also relatable. They are their own human characteristic. You know, they're human characters of like Cap. You know, here's the thing like, other than the kid, all three, you know, all these guys have been participant in the war with Doc developing weapons and Cap, we assume, was in the Navy. But you know, we get to see bits and pieces of their personalities. You know, Cap is very much, you know, like he's an outgoing person, very much in charge, but he doesn't like, say, the Japanese government. He, he's he gone and criticized the Japanese government a lot in the movie, but he's a very, you know, charismatic, you know, person who, who does, you know, shown that he does regret the war. And he, there is some wisdom in him 
even though he has a bit of a temper at times, he there is wisdom and there is a bit of comedic moments with him as well. And the kid, you know, we he is like the one who doesn't know the real horrors of war and he has to be like put in his place to say like listen kid you do not want to be in war <laughs> like everybody sort of reacts like hey you know war, being not being in war is a good thing but we actually you know we get, do understand the kid's perspective though because of his you know lack of real experience with war and everything we understand where he comes from and we also in some regards relate to his you know want of desire i should say of trying of wanting to help like wanting to participate and help his fellow man you know and we relate to that and doc is doc has become you know very much everybody's favorite character <laughs> just looking online but you know he has you know some charm to him too he's a bit nerdy but you know there is some intelligence with him and he's he's a very likable character you know and that's the thing is just like each character has some human characteristics to them like distinctly human stuff about them like human you know quirks to them that's the best way to put it like each one has like quirks their own stories something that we just don't get with a lot of Godzilla movies not to say you know the characters in the past are bad or anything but we never like really got to sit down with those characters like we do with the characters here and what's also interesting fact is these characters just gone through hell with World War II in some regards each of these characters gone through some sort of hell but i you know that's that's another thing that we can relate with i think there is a moment in time where we've gone through our own hell maybe not not to the extent of world war ii fire bombings in tokyo bad or just having to serve in war like a losing war hopefully not that but there are moments in our lives i think we've all all gone through our personal hell and moments where we just see the worst of humanity like these characters have Par characters who are coming from very bitter places but this movie is a celebration of human life one of the great you know characters in this movie is uh, shikishima's neighbor i believe her name was sumiko and I'm looking through IMDb, but she was a mother who lost her children in the fire bombings. And we understand where she comes from. Like, even though she says some really awful things to Shikishima about how dare he come back alive, you know, how dare he not do his job. We understand her place, but as the movie progresses, she becomes some like the one of the most supporting characters to Shikishima helping Shikishima and Noriko uh, you know the love interest of the movie help raise this orphan child that they found or, or I should say Noriko found but Shikishima took Noriko and the child Akiko and, and you know Sumiko like steps up and helps with them and soon enough they're back on friendly terms as the movie progresses and it, Sumiko actually babysits Akiko many times and Shikishima even to the point of saying you know when he thinks he's going to die fighting against Godzilla Shikishima gives you know tries to you know give a letter like put a letter next to Akiko to for Akiko to give Sumiko to say like hey look after Akiko you know there is that sort of trust in there I also real quick this is a tangent but I really want to say I think the acting on for Shikishima and Noriko Shikishima being played by Yonosuke Kamiki 
and Noriko being played by Minami Amabe, which, by the way, she also played as Ruiko in Shin Kamen Rider. And by the way, I apologize for butchering their names. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not really... Like, I'm not great. I'm a white American dude. I don't speak Japanese. I want to speak Japanese. I need to get back to learning Japanese. But obviously my... It's really... You know, my pronunciation is not going to be the best. So I apologize for that. But I I just want to say they're acting... Both of those actors did a great job. Because I... When I watched the movie... I felt like those two characters specifically... We see them at the beginning. They look and act pretty immature. Like they're, they look like young adults that just, you know, are facing reality for the first time. Where, and just in two years' time, we just, we see them mature. And I think their acting reflects on it. Like, it's weird. Shikishima, especially, he looks so different by the end than he does in the beginning of the film. Like, we see these characters really mature, and that's uh, really great. And, yeah, there's another character I want to highlight, uh, Tachibana, who, who is mad at Shikishima for what happened on Odo Island. But, what, you know, he, you know, he torments himself, and we see, while he's, like, absent for a majority of the film, he comes back near the end to help rebuild this plane. But we we just see how he is tormented. But by the end, he wants life to pursue. You know, he wants Shikishima to live, even though in the beginning of the film, he was a engineer for kamikaze jets, uh, planes. And he, he seemed to be one of just like, hey, just do your job for the government. You know, just do your job. You know, this is your honor, whatever. But even then, he comes around and says, please live. Even with someone like Tachibana, who we may have disagreed with, a, you know, his, like, a, you know, assumed beliefs, you know, in the beginning, we come to understand him and he goes through an arc. And again, it's just like, that's the thing about the cast is that they're very human. They all got their own development and quirks. What's even cool is that there's even, even the minor background characters in this movie all have like little quirks and you know stuff to them that make them memorable as well this is like again this is what I mean about this being an anti-Godzilla movie is not focused on Godzilla Real, like it's not like not everything is focused on Godzilla or the kaiju it is focused on the human cast because there's a government worker that Shikishima tries to go on you know go and you know to try to find Tachibana to fix up the plane you know the government worker I don't know his name I don't even think they say his name but even that character there's just a little quote quirks and just moments where you know just human just human parts of that character where it's not he's not just like Oh, sorry, I can't find him. But he's like, I look, dude, I, 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 he doesn't want to be found. I'm sorry, but we're busy. Everybody wants to be found, you know? Like, we, you know, it's just like, this is a human film. Like, a very human film. One that wants to really put human life in the forefront. And that's what, that's why I think everybody loves Minus One. Because of how human it is. That's why it's becoming everybody's favorite Godzilla film because of its focus on human life, its value on human life. And that is one of the themes of the movie is just the value of life. And major spoilers for this section, even though I've haven't really been like really like clear about moments in the movie and just kind of been going over everything. But this one's very specific, like in the end they do defeat Godzilla and Godzilla is like falling literally falling to pieces into the ocean but we get a scene where we see the soldiers or not the soldiers but the well former soldiers I should say like and all the characters 
saluting Godzilla. And at first I was like a bit confused as they didn't really portray Godzilla in a very sympathetic light in this movie. But it but I get it now, you know, after seeing it so many times. They salute to Godzilla even though Godzilla was this major threat. Godzilla was also a life that was impacted by the war and the atomic bombs. And it goes to say that this wasn't a fight to the death, but it was a fight to live. And even though Godzilla is this monster, the characters value Godzilla's life. <laughs> you know, even even the creature that has caused them so caused them so much torment, so much death, they still value its life. That's that's something beautiful about this movie. It's just how it values life in general. Even though people die, and that's that's the thing, you know. And it's very important in a movie like this where the message is about valuing life. You know, seeing people die, and have you know having going through characters that death, death is much important. You know, fact like you can't value life without death. You know, so having like death in this movie is important to that message, and. That's, you know, and that's what's really beautiful about this movie. It's very human. It values life. And it's just, again, the focus is on our characters. This is a very character-driven movie. And I think that's why everybody's been loving Minus One. Anyways, this is the first of the 2024 unscripted discussions. Hopefully, you know, hopefully I can, uh, do these a bit more often than the essay videos <laughs> uh, but if you stick around this far thank you for watching uh hopefully when blazar ends i will have a blazar video because i i think i'm gonna have a lot to say about blazar as well but yeah uh thank you so much for watching subscribe to the channel if you want to see more and uh, yeah open to have more discussion videos like just low-key discussion videos like this anyways Hope you have a good day. Take care and shoo-watch.